So Ms. Baptiste, um, and discussing this with Ms. Thor and Ms. Martin, there was a letter that was sent and signed in the fall. Um, it was sent home. A physical copy. A physical copy. Um, and there is not a copy of that. So we'll make sure you get another copy of that. You have received it in the past. Regardless, that is not a policy. That is a procedure referencing the state policy that says we acknowledge you have that right as a parent of a student diagnosed with autism. Um, the statement on there just states that, again, what Mr. Reese said is we would prefer that the student be in school with us and receiving daily instruction. So that's what that letter is. So we can make sure you get another one of those. I wanna go back to that health section because she wanted to reference something about the, the food, the eating. And I don't think we captured that. I have a quick question. Yes, um, Thank you. Uh, the, the services, um, Mr. and Mrs. Baptiste, that you're checking him out, to go participate in. Are those services that he's receiving currently through his IEP as well? Or are you taking him there to get those services because he's not getting them in the IEP? Both. Okay, just curious. Thank you. So it said that he has sensory challenges that may cause him to not be able to tolerate certain uh, prepared food items. Prepared food items. So we can, I mean, that makes sense that we would note that. Mm -hmm. Is he having difficulty with that at school? Um, no, he, he, I mean, he comes with his lunch his box. His lunch, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, he, I'm sorry. I think it was feedback. Oh, okay. So he comes with his lunch box. Uh, a lot of times he doesn't eat what is in there. Sometimes he'll ask for, says that he wants the mac and cheese. Um, I've found that he likes Cheez-Its, so I always have Cheez-Its in the classroom. So anytime I offer him Cheez-Its, he says that he wants Cheez-Its. Mm -hmm. um, but... When he's done, he's like, he says, all done Cheez-Its, throws it away, and that's that. So it wouldn't be, a, I, I was just asking that just for information yeah. mm -hmm. purposes, it wouldn't be a reason that for us to not note that yes. right. in, that, in that section. Sure. Ms. Baptiste, you got your hand raised? Yes, and I also was going to ask for an update on how breakfast is doing because, you know, we were concerned because he doesn't really eat all day. Um, and I try to put so much stuff to try to tempt him his mm -hmm. favorite stuff. And normally when something works out with the teacher, like the cheese is, I'm not going to touch it because if I start putting cheese in his bag again, he, it'll like mess up that whole process. Yeah. <laughs> um, I so I, 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 I'm staying away from that for right now. We used to put Cheeto cheeses before, but it's like, like he'll eat it and then he'll stop. But, um, I know you said that due to the bus <laughs> coming in late, you know, he wasn't getting breakfast, but then you were supposed to bring him breakfast um, to the classroom. So how is that going? Is he eating the breakfast or? Um, the most he's done so far is just open the breakfast item. He has taken a bite of a Pop-Tart on one occasion, but a lot of the time um, he just takes it off his desk or will say no breakfast. Um, so he's not interested in the food, at least that I've seen so far. He's thought about it, but he has not eaten it. Okay. And and this is a good example where, you know, when I sent the letter, that whole process was continued, even though it wasn't written clearly, you know, because you give him the cheese at max and the um, popcorn, different things that he will use the microwave for. But it's just the attendance part that was not crossed over for some reason. But it's good to have both clarified on here for the health, um, dietary reasons, and the attendance. Um, do we want to transcribe that information about the sensory diet 
needs. I think that might be really meaningful to add to that health care mm-hmm. statement. Yeah, it's, um, it's not um, necessarily a special diet. It's just yeah. making a note that that could be an issue. Right. And yeah. what I can do in this section where it does say special diet is say see above mm-hmm. where we reference that. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I don't know if I can copy and I don't think I can copy and paste out of here because it's a PDF. So, um, but we will, I think, um, let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing here. I think what we want to do, Ms. Baptiste, is um, um, excuse me. I think it's number two that speaks to the sensory. She was talking about issues eating, eating with issues. eating. Yeah, yeah, that's all here under number two. Um, that would be good information to include in mm-hmm. the healthcare section. So we'll work on getting that transcribed um, into there. So. Did you still have and your- one and three? Yeah, one and three addresses the attendance. So parts of that should also be included in there. Okay. One of the things I'm a little bit concerned about is that um, that box may not allow for all of that information to be typed in there. Um, I'm more than happy to um, um, make sure, obviously, that this letter is in the uploads of the IEP and we can direct folks to look there for information from this same provider regarding attendance. But I think it's probably most important to have the dietary information in the healthcare section typed out. Um, um, so, and, and while I agree, while I agree with that, we're we're not necessarily having issues. Well, except the him maybe consistently getting the breakfast part, but we're not really having issues um, with the dietary because, like I said, the team picked that up, moved forward with no problems. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, with the attendance, we're having so many problems. Told we have to bring in letters, new letters. When it was added, it was supposed to be added to his IEP, and the date of that is in that email from Ms. Urbanek. Um and the team agreed on it. So if it was, and, and the problem I have is that and why this IEP is unreadable is because this is what we've told been told before that, oh, I'm just going to upload it or we'll tell people refer to this letter. And it's a lot in that IEP, to be quite honest, and people get lost. And so if it was readable, the team would have known all this. Like we would have been moving forward. This will not be an issue. I wouldn't have to continually keep dealing with this. And so, so basically, you're telling me we want to continue doing the same thing, even though it's keep causing us problems. And that is one of the reasons why, when I say this IEP is unreadable, you because the the system you had before, when Michael entered in kindergarten, you was able to write everything out, and I have a copy of that IEP. Everything was written out. So because the district decided to switch over to a new system that limits what a person can write in there, that is a violation of these students' rights. Because this is what happens that people don't understand. It gets confusing. You know, I have to constantly, you know, keep trying to get this issue corrected. And so what you've been doing in the past apparently isn't working. And then you're telling me now we're just going to do the same thing. Now, I heard Ms. Free say he's going to add that information. And then we have been uploading your input and and the things that this letter that letter was not uploaded. So we can upload that. So that's yeah, I'm going to the school. Um, but what is the issue? I'm, I'm hearing her con- say continually saying that, that attendance is an issue. I don't see any unexcused absences. So what it sounds like you've kind of granted her grace for coming in whenever Michael can't get up in the morning based on number based one. On yeah. So what what I, is that? What is I want to make sure because I, Ms. Baptiste, I hear you say it's a continual issue with attendance, but I'm not hearing. Ms. Martin, that there's I have an issue or that no, uh, I'm not sure what Ms. Martin is still talking about, but so let's make sure then that letter is uploaded. Yeah, and it's referenced. So
Yeah, I think yeah, I can't remember it was the last. It wasn't the last IP, but the one before that. Um, Ms. Martin had made a statement when I was trying to address this issue um, that we wasn't going to be basically giving Michael a blanket excusal. You have to show um, why he missed each time bringing the letter from that provider because, for all you know, we can be on vacation somewhere. Which one? And those. That, so for each time he's going to be out for an appointment that they would have a letter? Well, for the appointments, no. When students bring in forms that tell us about their therapies, we do that all year. But when he doesn't show up one day, say a Tuesday, we don't know. Is it anxiety? Does he have the flu? We don't know. And the teacher has to, cannot mark it excused. It's not able to do that. They have to mark it absent. And then in the office, our attendance registrar, she marks it excused or not. So the problem is we never know what's wrong with you, if it's his anxiety or if it's something else. Um, and sometimes it might even slip through. We have we have to be careful and go back and look because every other child has some kind of note that the person puts. She uses all those notes to mark, change them to excuse. So when Michael doesn't have one, it's sometimes I mean it could slip through. But we're we're working on making sure it's uh, excused. Yeah, and the the issue is that. Most parents don't know their right to have this added to the IEP. So because I understood my right and had it added to the IEP, that's why I know I don't have to bring a letter every time. So once you add it to the IEP, it's known this is a child with autism, this is a child with these other disorders, and he's going to be missing school. So you it's like you already pre-know. I'm sorry, that's not what I said. But I said we're trying to, we are excusing them, but if one slips through, we have, may have to try it. You may have to catch it and let us know. We do our best in the front office to mark all of them excused. And and I think um, maybe where the issue comes up is that, you know, you have an IEP team, but sometimes other members of the school have to be trained on certain things. So whoever's in charge of attendance, they have to be trained that, hey, a parent has a right to have this added to the IEP. Once it's Add it to the IEP. Yes, it's going to be excused. So yes, if the yes, person doesn't, doesn't know that, that's where things are going wrong. Where they just mark and you know, I've been in the um. Well, I'm not going to say it, but yeah, that's where things go wrong. And so I think sometimes just helping people understand, kind of like what happened with the transportation department. You have to help them understand this is a student's civil right to this, and yes, this is how she, it's supposed she to. She understands. Be. She understands, and she doesn't question whether we excuse it or not. I just said that if one slips through, it's because of the paperwork error. If you see one, please let us know. I don't think there are any. Are, has I have it pulled up. No, there are no unexcused absences, correct? So we have, yes. Yeah, so she's been, she's made it all the way through and she's fixed them all. That That's not true. I had to get those issues corrected. And okay. so I that's why I was right. saying for me. Yes, for me, since I'm having so many problems with attendance, I need to see attendance written in there. Because it is not working from before where you're saying you're uploading it and people are not understanding this. So I want it written into that health you section written, about the attendance. Excuse me. You want it written in your child's IEP that he doesn't have to come to school any given day and it's automatically excused. That's what you're saying? What I'm saying is I want you to copy from how the doctor wrote it. And she number one and three, now both may not fit, so you may have to combine it. But they, she listed. So this isn't what I'm saying. So you can copy from one and three. It's listed in there. See, they did blah, blah, blah. It's uploaded because you said it's uploaded. Mm -hmm. right?
Sleeping, sleep apnea. It doesn't say sleep apnea. Yeah. Yeah. Not sleeping well. He can't sleep. Somewhere it's just an imposter. Yeah. Right. It's on one of the other. It's, it's right. Yeah. 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 And that's in athletics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you see the statement that I added there? Oh, am I sharing a different screen? It's still the. Um, yep. Okay. Okay. So I apologize. I thought I was sharing the healthcare section. It was just the, the form that you were referencing that was being shared. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so in addition to the um, statement that was already in that section, um, we did um, add um, a reference to see the attached letter from um, Casey that stated 11-21-2023 for information regarding sensory impact on diet, impact um, of um, his ADHD and ASD on sleep and attendance. So that'll be available to anyone who needs to access it. It's in the uploads. Can we put both dates there? So, because it's two dates. The letter from Casey from Health and Wellness is dated November 21st, 2023. Yes, and then you said you had the other one. So I can try to find it to get the date, but it should have a different date on there. For excused absences? Yes. It's actually, I have pulled up October 17th, 2022. October 17th, 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay, the one I'm looking at says December, December. November 21st. And then our information from impact is dated 12 4 of 2023 for an extended excused school absence. I mean, I just resent it to you, the one um, that was sent to you all that has the 10 17 22 also in there. Interest in accommodations. I guess that's, that's to go there. It's regularly scheduled. Yeah. I guess the other has to do with maybe the system of the school notified because if she didn't have an option to say 
All right, Mrs. Baptiste, you said that you, you emailed that to me. Oh, it just came through. So this is the original letter that was added to the IEP. So you're saying it was added to the IEP? Okay. At that date, but um, I was having so many problems. That is why I got the new letter with the date of a, whenever I thought it was December, but he put here 11, 21, 23. So because of the issues I was having, I went ahead and just got a new letter from the doctor. Okay, I still don't open. understand the issues, but okay, we're, we're referencing it, both letters and putting them in the uploads with the <clears throat> Yeah. Oh, I saw it raise my hand. Sorry. So I added a statement there. Let me save and come back to it. Um, it says, um, see also uploaded documentation regarding possible absences and excusal notes for regularly scheduled appointments. And I think, um, I don't mean if it is, but also, because it basically just says due to, um, not just the appointments, but the symptoms associated with autism, um, the anxiety. And there was an um, anxiety one that was sent by that same doctor's office. Um, and I haven't seen that one yet pull up, but that's the one where he missed over a month of school. So he qualified for homebound at that point. That was last spring, correct? Or two springs ago? I don't have the exact date, but... Um, okay. okay. I think that was included in previous. IPs. Okay, so the additional prior written notice was for. Well, and before we go there, because I also want to look while we're in this section, um, my husband had a question about, I think, the gestalt part for the um, language section. Um, and I forget, I was on my mind, you switched the screen. Can you go back to that screen? <laughs> I think we wanted to look at his eligibility category. So what's listed there now and how it's listed. Um, so his eligibility categories are autism spectrum disorder, occupational therapy, language impaired, and other health impaired. Okay. And I think on that previous 
sheet, there was a sheet. part on there, there that said phone speech phone that phone wasn't phone checked. Phone. And so we haven't received, I don't think that was included in this one. Because there's an academic reason for the language services. Is that why it's not checked? Well, he, he came with that here. As far as why is it not checked on the um, health care uh -huh. reasons? Yeah, and I had sent um, a couple of IEP meetings ago, Mr. Reese, a copy of the evaluation from um, Impact. They also call it progressive pediatrics um, that has speech listed on there. Language. So speech should also be up under there. Because Michael's language and speech is the main thing that's causing issues and his ability to access the general curriculum. Right. That's why he's classified as language impaired as well. Yes. And we will also want to add speech. Again, we've, we've been through that, Ms. Baptiste. We've issued a notice, of, a prior written notice on that before, that nobody suspects he has a speech disorder. They're, they're concerned with his language and his overall communication, social pragmatic language mm -hmm. concerns. So do you have the evaluation I sent you that has a diagnosis of speech disorder on there, Mr. Reese? It was doing one of the IP meetings. And I can try to since find May? It. Since May of 23? Yes. I'm I'm looking now. All right, do you have, let me pull it up here so that the folks online can see it as well. So, is this the one you're referring to, Ms. Baptiste from Impact? Um, I was trying to find it myself, but that, that's one of them because I think I sent two different ones, but that's one of them. This is the one I found that said speech therapy reevaluation. So they have up on their CPT code at the top right here. If you go back up at the top. Yes. Um, so they, they pretty much gave him a, a speech diagnosis issue. Um, but they also list, list in here a proxia. And so and I can't think of the one for math right now, but it seems like Michael does have a proxia. And the di what is the diagnosis you're sharing for math? I think it's this something. But um, it's listed right there, right there at the top. That's calculus. I, I think I sent this document twice. So there um, should be a couple of them in the file. Okay, what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing here as for diagnoses codes is a developmental disorder of speech and language unspecified, autistic disorder, an unspecified disorder of psychological development. What I think you're seeing up here under the CPT codes says that they were doing an evaluation of speech sounds production. So I'm looking to see if the results from that are included in this as well. But even with their diagnosis, they address speech and language, which mostly, most of the time you would do, especially once you get to Michael's age. And so that's why they have speech and language, because they both address two different things and different issues that Michael have on both sides. So even what you just read has speech listed. Yes, and I'm looking at their, their clinical diagnosis code, which lumps speech and language together. And we've we've visited this before in which he's evaluated and 
meets the eligibility criteria under language. If you are asking this team to revisit articulation and speech sounds, then it, I need to know if that's what you're asking. But this report was from five of 22, and we had discussed that in prior meetings. I've sent like maybe two or three different reports. So this is just one of many. Um, but we've all we've continuously been asking for him to be evaluated for speech. And you would basically just say no. Well, uh, there was probably a reason that that the speech pathologist did not suspect a speech sound disorder. And that would be a reason for a, no, a prior written notice. So we would have to go back at that. But if you're at your this report is from five of 22. So are you asking for a reevaluation to look at a speech sound disorder? Because remember, there's a difference between a clinical diagnosis and the educational diagnosis. Yes, this is one ongoing ask. So we're at, yes, so we're re asking, yes. So I'm referring to our speech language pathologist who works with him on his communication and language skills. If he, if what, what, where are you professionally on that as far as speech sounds rather than his language? and overall communication needs. He does have some difficulty saying longer words, which we do try to address. He will go back and try to repeat, but as far as individual sounds or anything that would uh, qualify him through an articulation evaluation, we've talked about this in previous meetings where some of the progress monitoring, but no, I don't think that there is a speech sound disorder per se. I think that it is language, but I have no problem get there. Okay. No. So wait, so so what are you hearing in class? Can he produce speech sounds? Yes. Yeah. I uh, like Ms. Hunt was saying, some of the longer words he'll repeat and try to get it. Um, but he is making the individual sounds without errors from what I have witnessed. Okay. Ms. Desmaradis, I see your hand. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I just need a clarification in regards to if a parent requests for an evaluation, that is something that we should have discussed if they, um, if you should get evaluation or not. Because I mean, if we get the evaluation, could we all now say that, okay, maybe now as of 2024, he no longer needs speech based on the current results or there's something that we can't do right now. Well, yeah, thanks for that input because that, that's kind of what I'm getting at is, is what are his needs right now? Uh, I know in the past, yes. his speech pathologist did not see that there was an issue with speech sounds. I'm hearing right now, teacher and speech pathologists are not hearing that. Well, if the parents would like an evaluation, is that possible that we can get evaluation so that we can have just clear data so that we can kind of come back and say, okay, this is what this is stating from this evaluation? Uh, it's up to it's up to this team if they want to go down that path because typically we say, does this team suspect that it that is a category of eligibility in the student need? And if they don't think so, then we would normally not say that, but it's always open for just discussion if the team wants to go ahead with that evaluation anyway. Yeah. I defer to you guys because you I have a question. <laughs> yes. Um, Michelle, you had mentioned that there's a difference between a um, clinical need and a educational need yes. and an educational need. Can you go uh, articulate that difference for us so that we could be um, informed about what that difference Certainly. is and so we could have a good understanding, good, clear understanding of that as a team? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that. So in the clinical setting, you will see those codes. Those are clinical diagnoses, meaning they give a test and they look at certain norms and they say, is this student within the norms or not? In the educational setting, they still look at that, but what the main focus is, is, th is this impeding the student's ability to access their education? Is, it, does he have speech sounds that he cannot make and that's impacting his education? We have to look at the educational relevance of it. And if it's, he's functional in the classroom as far as producing speech sounds, 
then that's what I'm hearing this team say. They don't suspect that to be a category, you know, disability. Unlike, um, different, excuse me, I'm sorry, I hear somebody. And, um, unlike the language components that are very much a component of a student who has autism, would be looking at the receptive vocabulary, the, the expressive vocabulary, the sentence structure, putting words and sentences together, um, looking at that, those pragmatic social skills. That would be the language piece. And again, this team and teams before this did an evaluation for that and found him eligible for language in the educational setting because that is impacting how he accesses his education. So what kind of speech issues would impact education? Like just for example, like what, what would, like where, where would the, I guess where would the, because if, if they're saying he has like a clinical um, diagnosis, like what does it take for it to rise to the um, standard of educational, uh, of having educational impact? So if you look at that code in this report, they lump speech and language together clinically. We, we look at them as two separate things in the school system. So what would impact a student that has a speech disorder would be if they were saying something to you and because the set, they cannot produce the sounds the right way, like a like wabbit for rabbit, and even still you understand that the student's saying rabbit, but it would be that case that you're not understanding the child because they cannot physically make those sounds. That would rise to the level of saying, well, this is impacting how he talks to the teacher. This impacts how he talks to his peers. And what I'm hearing is that communication is definitely a concern and an issue and something this team wants to continue with, but it's not because he can't make the sounds. It's more of the language component. And Ms. Baptiste has her hand raised. Yes, yeah, Ms. Baptiste, I see your hand. Okay. Well, you finished, Deshan, I guess, saying whatever you're saying? I mean, yeah, I was just trying to get clarification. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Shields. Um, so I, I just want to clarify, um, because I know you, Ms. Shields, mentioned that um, they lump speech and language together. Mm -hmm. um, I, myself, am a provider, and so Anytime we lump diagnoses together, that doesn't take away from the significance of the diagnosis itself. So if I were to say someone had um, bipolar disorder with depressed mood, they still have the bipolar disorder, they still have the depressed mood. So, it, it, you know, there's so many different codes that different providers can use. Some may lump it together um, because usually when you have one, you have the other. And so they make it easy for them, put them together, but that does not take away the significance of the diagnosis. Um, but I wanted to say that, you know, we as parents have a hard time understanding um, Michael. So, and in these reports, it says, you know, he responds in two to three words. Um, Michael cannot pronounce a lot of different words. Right now, he's going attempting to go into the general education classroom for science and social studies. They have a lot of complex words. <laughs> Michael cannot, if you were to put Michael next to one of those other students, um, as these reports show, he would be somewhere probably two to three standard deviations behind his peers. And so when Michael go into that classroom, or even in his regular classroom, he cannot access that curriculum because he does not have the ability to form those sounds. And to okay, speak so like a kid on his same age. That, right. And again, that has to do with his language deficits. And if we scroll further down in this report, you can actually see for articulation, it says it's the intelligibility is good and articulation is judged as good being ba based on clinical observation throughout the evaluation and during previous sessions. So they were seeing the same thing. So what data does the school have? So this is the data we gave you all, and I know you asked Ms. Hunt, um, but what can we see some data from speech that supports this decision? Because the data you know, is that speech. they're reporting that they can understand his speech sounds. That's the data. No, I'm asking for the school's data, not our data that we gave you. I'm asking for the school to pull up your own data to show us 
But why did Ms. Hunt make that decision, a recommendation as a speech teacher? What recommendation? So, that he doesn't qualify for speech up under the speech um, diagnosis. Well, they're not What's, qualified. It's that, how is this in, in accessing his curriculum? Is, is a speech, does he have speech sound errors that are impacting? It's not that you made a diagnosis. Yes, I guess does. If, if you wanted, I have not done a speech evaluation with Michael. What I have seen with Michael is that he, for the speech sounds of English, that he can produce all of them. And this is, Ms. Brewer has done some progress monitoring with phonemic awareness and those mm -hmm. types of things. So he definitely has some difficulty with identifying and the skills of listening and that words are broken into sounds made up of sounds that you use letters to write the words for that. But if you look at his, um, where he is with the words that he can put together spontaneously, what he usually does that we're noticing is he either uses a prompt that he's given or he will um, say a sentence in a chunk that sounds like what he has used before that's worked for him. So he's probably got a lot of receptive language that it's hard for him to put into his expressive language. But as far as being able to repeat words and say the speech sounds of the words, the longer they get, they are harder for him, but that goes along with it's harder for him to spontaneously produce his mean length of utterances, which are two to three words or a little bit more, but often if it's longer, it's a phrase that he's used a lot. Does that make sense? And, and yeah, Ms. Hunt, uh, how awareness, does, she's been doing things up on the phonemic, phonemic awareness, so that will fall up on the speech? No. Well, it's it falls under the data that you're asking for. The speech yeah, that I understand that. what you're saying, he may be under hard to understand sometimes because he might not know how to pronounce a word, but the sounds within the words he has within his repertoire, he's physically able to do and able to repeat those sounds. He can produce those sounds. Okay, so the data that you have that we've been asking for, his phonological fun, awareness, the code and all those things are potential data. So all that data is showing you there's a, def a severe de deficit. So that's what I'm trying to ask you to explain. And you can pull it up. If you could pull yeah. up what the data shows us in those areas. It's a, language a language deficit, correct. Yeah. And then also, Ms. Baptiste, there was an IEE with the speech and language clinic at FSU in uh, February of 2022, where they noted that he, they informally um, assessed him to be mostly intelligible looking at speech when they had done that evaluation too. So I think we're kind of splitting hair, hairs here on the semantics of what speech is or isn't. Um, I, I'm hearing this team say that they, they do not suspect he has a speech sound disorder. And so I, I'm prepared to issue a prior written notice on that so that we can move on to all these other important things we need to discuss. Okay, and while we're on speech, can we go ahead, I think you could discuss the gestalt part? Huh? Yeah. Oh, well, before that, I just had to ask Ms. Hunt a question. So, Ms. Hunt, um, uh, he, he's fine with the blends as far as being able to articulate uh, blended sounds. Can you give me an example of what you're talking about with blended sounds? Like if you gave him at, could he say cat and blend those sounds together? Um, I don't like the do it with, with him in therapy right now. Um, what I'm working with him are the goals that are established on the plan with using the um, pronouns and the things that we had talked about before. So the, I am trying to make sure that he has material that we're working on when I work with him together with the sound blends. I'm not sure if you're exactly what your definition is. That's why I'm asking you what you... What are you talking like, about? Um, I, think I'm, I think I'm thinking about like letter blends. Like if there was a, like the word crust, could he say K-R? The yes. yes, with the C-R and the, and the S-T's and everything, just are, are those articulated clearly? I think he's capable of it. I don't have data to show that when I'm working with him and he's repeating things after me, sometimes he will leave off the ending sounds. 
but he will try to go back and correct it if I don't go past what it is we're talking about and stay on it for plurals, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like if he's not putting the ending sound on to mark plurals, um, like in the word book, he might say when we're talking about something in a story and say book instead of books. So he's capable of doing it, but he might leave it off. So I might have to go back and, you know, try to elicit that from him. So we might not do it the first time. I understand what you're talking about with that. Reading when you're doing reading with him, mm -hmm. I'm just like, like what Mr. Baptiste is asking. Like so understanding how he's blending those sounds together. So when we're doing reading, some of our stuff right now we aren't at um, with his interventions. We're not at um, letter blends yet, but with the words that he knows as like sight words, like his th. We don't have, we aren't seeing an issue with, well, I'm not seeing an issue with whenever we're doing some of that type of stuff. Um, SH, those things, like he's producing those sounds. Um, there, sometimes there is um, a final um, phoneme deletion, like whenever he's doing his, um, or substitution, whenever he's reading um, a word, like a CBC word, if it's mapped, sometimes you might say map. Um, but he can correct it and he can produce that sound still um, whenever his attention is brought to pay attention to that last sound it makes. Ms. Baptiste, you have your hand up? Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to go back to my original question. I was asking for the data because within the data you have, and I was trying to pull it up to make sure I can name them all, but um, because this is important because this is the basis of reading skills. And so Michael's inability to form speech at the expected grade level and age level um, is interfering with his ability to access the curriculum. He can't pronounce most of the words um, probably in that science and social studies classroom. Um, but the, the data we asked for showed that you ought to have a use in an intervention program that's showing Michael's skills for decoding, encoding, phonological awareness, fluency, and comprehension. So th that's data. And I'm, I'm asking you to pull that data up and let's look over and discussing it. And you're basically telling me no. Like if you make a suggestion, you have to use data to back it up. But the data you have is not backing up what you're saying. So that's why I'm asking you to pull up this data so we can look over where does it Wait, show so you want to Michael look at his is. reading data. You want, you're requesting to look at his reading data right now. I thought you well, already pre-present levels before we have okay so okay. we go and well that we will be your intervention reading program. phonological All awareness okay right okay yeah yeah ms Baptiste. I, I yes i i guess that is what we are saying because i'm hearing that this team's already reviewed that with you as far as phonological awareness what you're talking about and they're not talking about he can't pronounce letter sounds so, yeah, we're, I, I'm just going to have to move forward with a prior written notice on that. I understand your concern on the reading. Everybody's concerned mm -hmm. with that and his, his, his language skills. And I believe that's what the team has, has gone over with you and has proposed to continue to work on those skills that he needs to work on. So, I, um, so as far as your parent request for a speech sound evaluation, I'll, I'll write up the prior written notice. Um, I'm looking at the time here. We've been here quite a while and we have not even gotten past the first prior written notice, which is what you requested so that we could move on. Could we go ahead and look at the second prior written notice based on what your, this team had discussed before and was not in agreement with the parent? Um, I guess you were talking about ESY. I'll pull it up. And, and I think um, actually while we're on this section, the just thought issue, I think my husband wanted to comment on um, since that follow up on the speech also. Language. I'm sorry. Gestalt language. Oh, that's right. Gestalt, yeah. What did you want to discuss about the Gestalt language?
was there a question or comment about the Gestalt language? I'm sorry, I've been talking with my mic. Um, oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was I, I wasn't sure where on the IP it needed to be placed. I didn't see any reference to it on the IP at all. Um, so I, I need to, we, I guess, as a team, we need to figure out where on the IP we need to address um, his uh, Gestalt deficiencies. Referencing that that we have information on Gestalt learners, language learners, or that he is a Gestalt language learner. What what is, what exactly did that, you want that, reference? That I he think is a Gestalt, that he is a Gestalt language learner, and he seems to have deficiencies in that area as far as um, being able to form those mental Im images. Okay, so again, I have to. Defer to the team who works with him. It, 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 that, that you definitely. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if this, this yeah. was like. I'm sorry. I didn't hear. I'm, I I stopped because I heard you talking. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'll. I'll listen because it, um, it seems to be breaking up every now and then when um, yeah. when I don't know if we're talking over or something, but I'm listening to here. I, I think you said something concerning the team needs to take some steps. Well, I guess my ask was what what exactly did, did what here was your parent input references, I guess, the document you provided on Gestalt learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then again, so then what is what is the ask, I guess? So, Michael appears to be a uh, Gestalt processor and it's kind of integral to the way he's going to uh, be able to learn and be able to uh, access the curriculum, especially in regards to reading. Um, we we haven't uh, given him a curriculum that kind of addresses that uh, type of learning uh, style that he has. And so um, we need to have it somewhere in the IP so that we could formulate a IP that is going to correctly, you know, accurately address his uh, issue and his deficiencies in that area. Okay, so that's interesting that you bring that up because I'm looking at this and it's from um, it's from Nancy Bell back in the day and talking about Gestalt learners and how how they visualize the, um, to learn to read and help with vocabulary development and sentence. Um, um, what you what you just said though, you said they're they're not using a curriculum that is based on this. Um, help me here because we have in our district we have implemented the use of UFLY, especially with students that are behind in reading. And UFLY has all those components in it, correct? So, is this something that is used at this school? It's used okay. for all K one students and second, third, fourth interventions for interventions. Yes. yes. And, uh, Interventions, but but the parents did not want us to use that program with Michael. The program that has all the components you're requesting. So what are what are you using? Um, one of the programs that was on a list of things, um, the attainment company's early reading skill builder. Um, mm -hmm. that was on a gosh a few meetings ago on a document that they sent. Of yes, they, they, sent. Sent. they were comfortable with for interventions with Michael because they had been research based for students with autism. So mm -hmm. that and that was from I think the University of Indiana or Indiana oh, University. Indiana or Ohio. One, one, of, those, one right? of those there was red in the logo. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, and I was like, well, I've got this early reading school builder. So that's what I've been using with Michael. And he's making six. He's making progress. Slow. Yes. Okay. So we can acknowledge that from this report that they provided, we acknowledge that he has these deficits and he needs certain modes of instruction. Mm -hmm. 
and they proposed a certain curriculum to use instead of what we would propose and we have research to show is working with students with significant Reading yes, they were deficiencies. Um, there was not research to show they use it specifically with Correct. students with ASD, Correct. and that's what you know. I know that there were students probably in this, right? You know, but an assessment it was all assessment. Yeah. Okay, so I, where would we capture this that we acknowledge that he is a Gestalt learner and that he does need these interventions for? these type of interventions for reading and that we are providing these for him. Where would that is that would be back in the present levels of reading that he needed. And Mr. Baptiste, you said your takeaway from this article was that it was phonological awareness, visualizing, help me. If, if I, I think Ms. Desmarotis has a question too, um, okay. but I also want to add in that, um, you know, it, it kind of also applies for autism too, just so you know. But I think most of the research um, studies have shown in the curriculums you all use, either no children with autism were used. And I think the one you're using now, only one child with autism out of 20 something, I can't remember if it was 23 or 27 students. And so and they showed no, um, particular games um, for children with autism. So you all don't have anything to show evidence to show, you know, that you have any type of multi-sensory um, approach for teaching these children and, and helping them be able to access the um, general curriculum. And so... Um, That's actually not true. That Youth Fly does provide all those components and it is research-based. But I'm hearing that you told the school that you do not want them to use that because it doesn't yes. specifically say. But we don't even have any data to show that it may or may not work for Michael because it was not you. You you denied that. So this yeah, team, that's not true. Do, so this school is using something that you propose for research base. Okay, so we're going to document in present levels that he has these needs, that he should have a, a reading curriculum that addresses those needs. Is what they proposed? Does it have all those components? And is he making gains? Because it's our responsibility, if he's not, that we need to look at what we know works for some other students we've had success with with autism. And, and can I clarify on the U Fly? Um, yeah. When we, I, I did not refuse U Fly. And like I said, these recordings, you have the recording, go back and look at it. What I said okay. was, I was willing to use U Fly for K through second grade material as like a remediation for Michael. But I said, I still expected something for the third grade level. That was my response. I did not refuse, but I did say that I had to write as a parent because you fly is experimental. Like Michelle just said, there's no data. And so because that's Michael- is, That's absolutely not what I said. There is- You said you don't know if it works or not. Yeah, Pardon? so it's experimental. Mm -hmm. And so I was well, saying well, that um, right now that? he needs something- did speak to that. that that's not true. right now. He needs something that has research and evidence based, and because he's so far behind, so that's the reason why we said for third grade, you know, we just felt that it, we need to know something, use something that we know that works, basically. And I have to say also that yes, you did tell us not to use that, and and you in our last meetings. And it is research based. Okay, so we're going to put that in the present levels that we acknowledge he is um, a gestalt learner and um, those strategies that help him visualize yeah. for reading purposes is, is helpful. I thought um, when we discussed this the last time, and it's been so long that uh, my memory might be a little bit foggy, but I thought, I thought the hang up was that. Um, when we did ask about the uh, about the um, whether or not you fly was uh, calibrated for um, helping students with the uh, that were gestalt learners, the response was that we didn't know. I um, think that's what. Um, can I say that? Yes, Terry, go ahead. Are you saying you asked? Are, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Me, uh, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to answer your question, Mr. Baptiste. Um, yeah, well, you, no, so are, you, are you saying that there is research and evidence that the U fly is um, has been um, shown to uh, uh, 
to help children read who are Gestalt learners? Is that what we're I'm saying? Gonna, I can answer that, Mr. Baptiste. The question was not anything about Gestalt when we discussed it. We, uh, Mrs. Baptiste asked if there were, um, if this had been research based with students with autism. And the answer when I talked to the people that ran it in our program, when we went to our trainings, they said no, that had not specifically been, there was not a specific group of students with ASD who were, um, were a part of the research. There could have been students in it. They used all the students in a um, school system. So I, there may have been students within there, but no, we did not talk about the stall. It was all about whether it had been research based on with students with autism. And that's why I so said there is no I cannot say it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're right. I, I remember now. So, so, and, and that's why I believe my wife said that, um, uh, it doesn't seem to be a research and evidence based program for students with autism, which I guess she correct um, in that. And I think a couple of uh, our team members have some contributions they want to make to the conversation. So I'm going to mute my mic at this point. And um, I believe Ms. Desmarat has had her. I'm sorry, I know there was a lot being said. Um, I just wanted to kind of go back because I know you, um, someone had mentioned, I'm sorry, because I all the names in the room i apologize that um we haven't used the program to you know see if michael is making improvement or not but i do know i don't know what was being used in the beginning of the school year but myself mr baptiste and the general ed teacher had a conference and at this time michael had made no progress i think he only passed one standard at that time in the nine week program that he was doing um whatever was being done in the classroom and my concern was that michael kept coming home with f's and we wanted something that can help support him in at home and also what we can use in the classroom. So I think a lot of our concerns and what we were trying to suggest different programs was to see what was going to best support Michael because of the fact that he had no gains. He was making no progress. And I had asked and I was like, is he the lowest student in the room? She expressed no. And I said, OK, so what can we do to kind of support that? So, I mean, I know that's a little bit far from the IEP, but I think the reason why we brought, we brought this up in different programs in the IEP is because Michael is not making it was not making gains. I can't say right now. Um, I know she said making slow progress gains, but, you know, we're still trying to ask for the data so we can kind of help and support so we can come together as a team. It's not to kind of go back and forth and say, you're not doing this, not doing that. But when we are looking at what we, because we're not in the classroom daily, this is what we're seeing. We're seeing zeros, we're seeing Fs, we're seeing no gains, especially when I'm working with him. I'm like, okay, what can I do to help and support that is similar into the classroom? So that's why we were trying to find something that was a program that we all can use. But if you feel that the program that your county uses is something that supports somebody that's a G-Salt learner and also with autism, we're willing to see how that looks, but we also want the data so that we can see that Michael is going to make gains. Like we just don't want him to be passed along and he's still on a first grade level. Can I, I just want to jump in on that. I, I agree that we do want him to make gains, but I think we have to be careful looking at gains based on third grade standards, which is what our report card is. All those Fs we have to by our law is, is we have to teach him on third grade standards. So we do, and that's why he gets F's. He, you were going to see the gains, not in, probably not in that until we catch him up with the others. You said he's on first grade level, yes. And so the intervention programs are based, are, are working to fill in all of the, the needs he has and then hopefully push him up to it. But you can't, we just can't look at the report card F's. And I know Mrs. Baptiste said last week that that she wasn't looking to have him on grade level because she knows he has some deficiencies. So I think we need to be careful when we say he's not making any gains because report cards are not the best measure of gains for Michael. So we're asking data though. So we have data showing otherwise how he's doing. Yes, if we use hard the data. Copy. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's all hard copy. Um, that's what I hear them ask. They they would like to know what that is because if they're just seeing report card rates, that would be a hard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So and we are that. we we did discuss we, some yes. of um, like okay. the IEP goal progress data uh -huh. last week as well okay. um, in our meeting. So for the intervention data, um, it's let's see. He 
is now on level, let me double check, level three, lesson three. Um, so he has gone through the way it, this intervention sets things up is it has the different sections that it goes through. It's got letter sound identification, blending, segmenting, um, decoding, sight words, and some comprehension questions. And each level um, has a different set of letter sounds that it works on. So he has gone through level one um, and those were those letter sounds that he has worked on have, are in the present levels. So that's like the S, the M and the A were level one, including blending with those letters for things like Sam and Am. Um, being able to identify his initial phoneme that is in a list of words is one of the things that it's done. He has, let's see. So let me pull letter sound identity. Letter sound identification has been, a, I'm trying to see if, I don't think I have, I have one, Let's see, it's all 100% all accuracy until one that he only got one correct. And that whole day was, oh, that was a day I attempted a digital, the digital version of it and he did not do as well. So I decided to stick with the hard copy version of that intervention. So he went down that day and then he went back up to 100% for letter sound identification. And he, let's see has maintained mastery in those throughout the different levels, even introducing the new ones. Um, for blending, let's see, for, I am looking at, for level one, he, there, it's mostly 100s. Um, there were, let's see, one, two, there were three um, that were not 100s there, um, for his blending. Now, in the lower levels, there are fewer words that is having you blend. Um, so as you get to the higher levels, he's getting more like 80% accuracy with those. Um, so, for example, on one that we did in December for blending, he got 80% accuracy. Um, so he got four out of the five on this one that I'm looking at right now. Uh, for segmenting... That's been a little bit more challenging for him. That's been several for level one, 50%. Um, and then after a couple weeks, he was at 100% for those um, words that were being assessed. Um, let me see. Again, level, his current level that he's at, which is level three, he has had, let's see, he has had an 80% accuracy with segmenting. And then he's also had a 40% accuracy with segmenting. And that 40% um, was after um, several, let's see. Six days without because of absences. And then it picked back up to 80% accuracy on the segmenting. Um, for decoding level one he did very well with um he got 
mostly 100s on that with a couple 50s sprinkled in. Now, these levels and these lessons, um, for each level, the first lesson does not have a data sheet because it is the initial instruction. The following lessons do. And as a cumulative, if the cumulative scores for the entire thing, so the letter sound identification, blending all the way through comprehension, isn't an average of at least 80%, the lesson gets redone. So that is why we've spent a lot of time on some of these levels is because we've had to redo several lessons. Um, a lot of that is coming from the, the, uh, the comprehension questions piece of it, which is based on a story that is read to him and then he repeats um, each page after. And then there are designated questions for those stories. You know what? I don't know why I didn't think about this before, Ms. Brewer, but we need to put him on Start Early Literacy. Okay. 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 And so well, I was able to get one of those at the beginning of the year. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that every, I think you still need to do it every month. This needs to be 30 okay. days in between. Start but that way that can that can get another data point mm -hmm. of, of progress. And Ms. Baptiste put in the chat, she's asking what grade is level one when you're referring to level one. I don't have Are that they aligned with me? grades necessarily? I'm not. What no. is skills? Early reading skills, whatever. Um, it's working on a variety of skills. I don't have the manual in front of me, so I don't know the answer to that. Okay. But what the grade level what those skills, grade skills level? normally taught at? So, like, if we're doing letter sounds, isn't that like kindergarten? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically you just read from kindergarten level, which is what it was showing he was last year, and then the data we showed, we brought said first grade, so, but that shows regression. But um, oh, I think Ms. Trail so had a question. This, I, can I comment about that um, real quick before Ms. Trail? Um, the, this intervention starts everyone off at level one, regardless like of who is doing it. It starts every single person that is doing this intervention off at level one. So, so what level has he achieved in that, in that at program? Chief. What is the, um, cause, because I, I guess we're having trouble um, because you're you're speaking in levels of a program that we're not familiar with, and mm -hmm. we're trying to see how that um, you know what is the um, crosswalk to like his grade standard. Because when he came in, we had uh, testing done showing he's at a specific you know had a, uh, mastered certain number of um, education of uh, grade level standards for um, like kindergarten and first grade. And we're trying to see if this, um, if like the, the data that you have show that he has progressed from that point when he came in in the school year, or how has he, where is he in relation to where he was at at the beginning of the school year? Because if you say the program starts everybody off on level one, then it is really insignificant that he's moved from level one to level three until we understand what does level three represent so, so we're trying I, to figure out where like where where is his, his skill level out and how has that changed from the beginning of the year that's the only way we could determine whether or not progress has been made through the um current uh course of actions yeah and, so, i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt uh, uh, I think trail has been waiting patiently to speak, <laughs> there um, you guys thank you Thank you for saying that, but my conversation was all about what you guys just were talking about. I wanted a little more information about the amount of progress that he had made because I, I hear everybody, you know, talking about what to do and we're doing this because the parent asked for it. I think as a team, though, we need to look at that data and go, is this adequate progress? If it's not adequate progress, then it is time to try, you know, a more intensive reading intervention. You know, that's that's really what I was after. But mm -hmm. the conversation you guys just had um, kind of teased that out. He has made progress. I hear you, but it's minimal. And um, are, are we talking about considering the other program that was discussed earlier? 
I think we are looking for that um, alignment. Alignment um, that was asked about. I am more than willing to look at doing UFly. I've already got the materials for that, um, which is the one that we were talking about earlier um, when we had some of that conversation before. Um, I think that what we need to do is really see the data. Is is it warranted to try a different intervention and and not just say. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we got ourselves into a bind by parents recommending something, and they, we just need to make sure we're making data driven decisions. Yeah, so in, in, in line with the idea of making data driven decisions, um, we need to look at a uh, intervention uh, curriculum or whatever we want to uh, term it um, that addresses that evidence research base for children with autism and also um, can address the gestalt learner uh, characteristics of Michael Batiste so that we could have something that's individualized for um, for Michael. And that was, as you know, that that's the concern with um, all of these programs. I remember when we did talk about the um, the program that you know, we had uh, uh, Proffered uh, forth from the Indiana University um, that they had uh, said were had shown some um, benefits for uh, children with autism. I don't believe at that point we had uh, we were looking at the uh, Gestalt component of of uh, Michael as far as individualizing um, his uh, education. So. Seeing that um, we've tried a variety of programs that um, don't address those concerns, issues, I think we should try to focus in on um, on solutions that are designed to uh, address those uh, skills and deficiencies. I hear you, Mr. Baptiste, because I, I want to see too that we're we're tapping into all those those areas that we recognize and it fits in with what we were talking about with his language difficulties, his oral language comprehension and his oral language expression weaknesses all fit into that. And that's where that visual imagery and teaching reading and comprehension really comes in. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that those are part of the interventions that we're doing. Um, I still just, I would, I would like to see what grade level instruction this is, where, what level he's That's what How many doing. levels are in the program? Do you know, Ms. Boer? So, five. This data sheet goes up to five. Um, it looks like it's kindergarten level instruction that he's still at. But sometimes you have to think too when you when you do this kind of instruction for intervention, you're trying to figure out you're filling in gaps here and there. So mm -hmm. he's had this instruction over the years. Maybe he has pieces, but pieces of it, and and these other ones fill in the gaps. So that's why they have everyone start at the same level mm -hmm. to make sure you have they, they're touching on every little gap that could be. So some of the things he goes through quickly, that means he's had it. Some of the things he struggles on, that maybe that was a gap. Because he's still getting the basic third grade yeah. instruction as well. Yes. Yes. This is in addition to. This is yes. in addition to, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so what that tells me is that because even uh, Mrs. Uh, Urban X data showed that he was at, a kinder, at least at the kindergarten level and in some areas on first grade level as far as reading. So he hasn't made any progress this year. If he, if his interventions themselves, if the interventions are um, on kindergarten level and the third grade level, we already know that he's failing the third grade instruction, then he has not made any uh, meaningful progress. And I think Ms. Trail has her hand raised, so if we can let her speak. No, I just did, Ms. Baptiste, thank you. Um, okay, you got uh, and I, I just want to kind of piggyback what Mr. Baptiste just said. I think I think he's specifically talking about reading when we're talking about 
the lack of progress there. It, it was more concerned with the reading. I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. I think that's what we're all talking about. And again, I would say lack of progress, slow progress. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's what that data right. shows that he's gone from level one to level three. He has made progress in that program. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's slow progress. I think we can all agree. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's definitely a, a student with some severe needs in this area. I think we all can agree to that. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to point out and make sure that was clear that it, he was really referring to that reading specific area because mm -hmm. they really they really do know that now he needs that multi-sensory approach mm -hmm. to learn the reading and um, they just want to make sure he's getting a chance to make all the progress he can. So I think it's a good conversation and I appreciate the team taking the time uh, to discuss this again. So that is So within that program that he went from level one to level, level one three. to three. Okay. So they're showing some progress there. Mm -hmm. He's not finished level three yet. No. no. He's, He's in level three. He's in level three. He will be due the last lesson, hopefully. Awesome. And could you refresh my memory? I'm sorry if we talked about it last time. Is that one on one reading? Is that group? Is it five days a week? I, I not is, is that intervention individual or yeah, is that it is in a small one, group? He, he does his intervention one on one. That's like, not so. No other students. Four days a week. It, days a week. It's available five days a week. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. I thought we had discussed it. I appreciate yep. that. First time. Also, I had a, I had a, I had another question. I just, I just remembered. Um. This this is uh, something a little different. This is uh, I don't want to pull us uh, too far off um, the course that we're on uh, currently, so we may be we may need to table this until the end. But um, is there is there like a progress or performance data for um, for this class as far as for this class and for the K through second? Um, Great. Does the school collect that data as far as for uh, as a group or as a whole to see um, Mr. how I, autistic I kids I, have been progressing? I think I, can answer that. I think I can answer that question, Mr. Baptiste. We, we gather data on every child. We look at them individually since they're all at different levels of doing different things. So I just can't say, you know, all the third grade students in Ms. Brewer's class I would not look at that data as a group. Being um, students with disabilities and individualized IEP plans, we look at them individually. So I have data on every child in the school. So do you have enough data like to form trends to say like over the last five years how these children have prog have been progressing um, using the uh, using the yeah techniques and approaches that we've been using for the uh, here at Hawkrise in this classroom? I know that Ms. Baptiste asked for that earlier. So I know I, I sent out the public request form or, or website for her to go to and complete that. Um, okay, I, did, I wasn't aware that that request had already came in. I'm sorry. Yeah, nope. that's okay. No I, worries. We can, we can gather things together. It just, it takes time with students information from five years or three years back yeah. so it that's probably the best vehicle to yeah 
request that information. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I just want to clarify that, that um, it was a FERPA request also. And so that information is relative or relevant to the decisions we're making as parents. Um, but that information is also public. And so when up on the FERPA request, you know, it is the responsibility of the school to fulfill it. But I do understand the data is stored at the district. But even if it was a public records request, you have to refer that to the appropriate personnel and not tell the parent, hey, you have to do this form because, you know, you have to be disability accessible. And so, um, you know, I haven't had a chance to respond to that email. And I didn't tell my husband. We talked about it, but I didn't tell him I had sent the email with their question. Um, but yeah, so that we we did make that as a FERPA request. Also, oh no, oh Miss Trail, Miss Trail, did you have something else to share? No, ma'am, I just did not unraise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for asking. Okay. Um, all right. So we've addressed just all we put that in the present levels for reading and the, the acknowledgement that he needs something that is um, for visual imagery for reading comprehension, language comprehension, and oral language. Use. So that was what Mr. Um, um, he's got it right here. Yeah. Let me because I want to add some of that verbiage that you just used to what I have here. Miss mm -hmm. <laughs> Boers um, going out for a restroom break real quick. All right, oh, guys. All right, so you said it really, really well. Yeah, can I say it again? <laughs> <laughs> um, that he uh, requires um, in reading instruction that includes to address the oral language comprehension and oral language expression weaknesses through imagery. They're requesting requires reading instruction. That We're I think mm -hmm. we acknowledge that yeah. he, because he has these oral language and comprehension and language expression weaknesses oral that he needs a reading program that's going to assist him. That was my takeaway yes. on that. I just can't remember words. Again. You might be a wordsmith. <laughs> <laughs> I can only remember what I said. Right. Michael requires reading instruction to address his oral language and his or oral language comprehension and oral language expression weaknesses. I did add something to you just to say these characteristics are present across subject areas because I was taking advantage of some space that we had in the challenges under science, social studies and career readiness, but I wanted to make sure that that's not this information and these characteristics of being um, a Gestalt learner, you know, are Only in present, that present yeah. across subject areas. So, um, Wanted to acknowledge that there, so that's available for everyone to see. So, is there a report that says specific to Michael? Something uh -huh. about okay, it's just information. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I was just pulling it in where we would know he has it. those right. lang language, expressive language, receptive language issues that would impact that reading comprehension. Okay. So, did we come to clarity about the intervention support? Um, 
No. Where did we land? Are we, if we're looking at. Also, is it listed in reading? He was showing three standard deviations behind. Um, three standard deviations behind on what assessment, Ms. Baptiste? Um, I remember it was one of the, I don't know if it was I read, it was something I remember seeing it, um, that it was showing three standard deviations behind in reading. And it was one of the, I believe, the computer assessments that they do to monitor how he's performing. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know that those are standardized assessments that would show a standard deviation. I wonder if you're talking about um, three grade levels behind or... Would it be a level one already for starting? No, there's not levels on those. There's Lexia. I know Lexia that has, has levels. levels, but that's not. But Lexia will be great. Um, so just trying to gain some clarification so we can address that. I will have to go back and find that. Um data she sent out um but it, i wanted to also ask about the social studies goal um it said that there is no goal needed and then the the statement you just wrote was saying how it affects all, across all subject areas and so i remember you were saying that that was going to be like the social studies issue was going to be addressed in the whole reading um part also so i think maybe just clarify that part also yeah and i is there something that speaks to in present level? It was in the present. It was in the screen right, right. just in the same screen. It was saying that his deficits um, in those areas are due to his comprehension. Um, and let me show you. Oh, upon a challenge? Uh, not, not the specific content area. So what we've so. got, yeah, what's listed here, Michael has difficulty performing on science and social studies tests. The tests in these subjects are comprehension based, not based on specific content area skills. Michael struggles with science and social studies tests and content due to his deficits in reading and comprehension skills and the verbiage of the content. No goal is needed in this area. So I wanted to jump to what the goals are to make sure we're addressing, addressing those comprehension concerns. Um, the first one is after reading or being read a passage on his instructional level, when given a set of comprehension questions with answers explicitly stated in the text, Michael will be able to answer the questions without inferencing with at least 75% accuracy. So we're addressing it. Comprehension there. Comprehension there. Um, I'm looking to see if there's anything else that talks about comprehension. Not necessarily, but it is being addressed with that goal. We have some other reading mm -hmm. goals that are targeting some different skills. But mm -hmm. um, so I think we've identified that he does have difficulty in those areas, but we think that that's primary to the difficulty he has with reading. Mm -hmm. And so. So for that last part, instead of it saying um, no goal is needed at this time, it should say these goals are also being addressed within his reading comprehension or something oh, of that that's effect. That's totally fine. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Happy to make that update. So I said these concerns are being addressed with a goal targeting reading comprehension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That sounds no good. worries. Let me save so I don't forget yeah, to gosh. have it disappear. Yeah. We don't want it to disappear. Yeah, sure. So. So did we decide what we're doing with reading instruction? Well, we can. We acknowledge he's been he has been making progress, mm -hmm. continual progress, just probably not as quickly yeah. as we would like him to. Do you recall, Ms. Dewar, when you started that? September. In September. So from September to now, he's gone from beginning yeah. it of level one. Now he's within level three. Yeah. You said it goes to five or six. Oh, the less. The less. The levels go up to 
there's like there's like there's like there's like there's like there's I got you. I got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Right I just um, didn't know if we were. You said you tried to do the, tried to get him to start early literacy at the beginning of the year. I, d- I, I see one on in December. In December. Okay. That was first December. First do you feel like he was able that that test was accurate when he took it, or was he not? It's hard to remember. <laughs> okay. The the actual sitting down. Yeah. I um, I know if there were behavior issues during it, I would have paused the test okay. and I didn't have to do that. Okay. So, um, but I know that I see Mr. Baptiste has his hand raised. You can always get that again. Too, I mean, it's but, been 30 days and mm-hmm. you can do early literacy again. Mm-hmm. And it would, in my mind, it would be, if we see that this program, but he's not making quick progress, progress on that, that you we'll fly would be it. amazing because it's working on all of our, with all of our other students. Who so, disability potentially, students. If we are not seeing growth in early literacy, we are looking at changing Change intervention. So I, I just want to recap what was discussed. And then, Mr. Baptiste, I see your hand up. So give me just one moment, and then I'll get to your question, okay? Um, so, okay, thank you. Yep. Um, what was being discussed, Ms. Boer said that she was able to use the STAR early literacy um, in December with him, which looks at some of those skills that that this is addressing and you fly would address as well am i correct miss martin okay yeah and so um we're able to use that progress monitoring tool once every 30 days so i think what the team is wanting to do is give that to him again because that would be some good information with more of this um early reading skills builders in place to know are we seeing um are we seeing that show up with that different progress monitoring tool. And what was just discussed is if if we're not seeing that coming up with that progress monitoring tool at the next assessment, then we could switch to utilizing UFLY in the intervention because um, I think there's some strong feelings that that does a a good job of, of, it's it's been successful for a lot of students. It does have a lot of multi-sensory components to it. We have used it with students um, who have been diagnosed with ASD here on campus, and we're seeing growth with them. I know everyone is different, sure. but at the same time, we've had that. Sure. So what I'm hearing the team saying is they want to do want to gather one more progress monitoring point um, for for Michael. Um, in regard to the early reading skills builder, using the STAR early literacy to do that. Um, And then if that's not showing growth, we know he's progressing through that program, but if that's not showing us growth too, I think the team is wanting to propose a change to using UFLY as that intervention. Continuing to monitor progress, like you were saying, how do we know if this is is working? Um, But just wanted to recap that discussion. Ms. Desmarados has a question in the chat as well. Um, Ms. Desmaradas, uh, so IEP goal progress is reported every, um, qu- every grading period is when Michael's is reported. So those goal progress reports are sent home on the day that report cards go out. Um, in regards to that, um, there's not a, like, set schedule as far that I'm aware of as far as intervention progress type stuff that we um i don't know if you fly has one really it's a um, weekly you have a weekly for the teacher the, the friday is a weekly um it's four days of instruction and the then, fifth day you do a little assessment okay. and that gives you an idea of what they got and what they didn't get so mm. that you can work with them on that yeah so, so is there a report like a reporting component that the teachers are required to be doing. Okay. No, we're looking at growth based on their their uh, star early literacy. Oh, so, no, thank you. Because I was just trying to see if you know. I think the question um, that we had, and I'm sorry that we had um, mentioned, was that what if there was progress this school year? So we kind of see like you know. I know you say you started at level one. He's now level three. So we just wanted to know. If, okay, I know you said started at September. So we just wanted to know exactly when. Sure. Like, if that be nine weeks or every four weeks so we can kind of see, okay, we can kind of see the growth happening or if it's regression, like, you know, that's what I'm just trying to look at. We can also do, I'm sorry. Every four weeks is the early literacy. Right. Every four weeks. Yeah. 
So, um, Ms. Baptiste, I see your hand up, but I wanted to get to Mr. Baptiste first, then I'll come right back to you. So, Mr. Baptiste, did you, I, I appreciate your patience while we talked that through. Did you have a question for us? Um, yeah, so I was um, going to request that Michael get evaluated uh, for by Linda Moo Bell to see whether or not their um, curriculum, whether or not they recommend their curriculum for his uh, particular um, uh, individual needs. So you're requesting reading evaluation, the, evaluation, the, evaluation by a Linda Mood Bell Center? Yes. So we've all acknowledged that he has these gestalt needs, that he needs a program that addresses those needs. Do we need an evaluation to, to further tell us that he needs interventions in that multimodal? I don't think so. The imagery. I think we we've got the information that it's appropriate mm -hmm. for him to have that sort of intervention, the multisensory approach. All right, Mr. Baptiste, did you hear that? Does the team have evidence and research base for addressing the needs of children with um, autism, especially with the Gestalt presentation. However, the Linda Mood Bell Center uh, does offer such curriculum. And so again, I request that they, uh, that an evaluation be given by their, by their analysts so that they can determine whether or not that their curriculum and their program would be appropriate for Michael's educational needs since they're the experts in their field. What their evaluation will show is where in their program he would fit. That's what they assess for. They would do some other basic reading assessments that we have and that we can also do if we need to get a further dig down further in reading. But um, they, yeah, they are experts in their program and they will do an assessment to, to see where in their program that he would fit. So, um, I'm going back to we acknowledge what his his um, language difficulties and reading needs are, and that we're addressing those. Anything else from the from the school team? We heard Mr. Baptiste's input. I'm, I'm sorry, because I, I I still I must have I, my. Uh... Oh yeah, his connection is fine. Yeah, your connection is a little spotty, Mr. Baptiste. What you guys are saying, so uh, my apologies if I uh, continue to ask you to repeat yourself, but um, I was saying that um, we haven't put forth a evidence of research based program that is. Um, that is, uh, you know, calculated to address Michael's individual needs being a Gestalt processor and also a child with autism. However, the Linda Moo Bell system is designed for that very purpose. So I wanted to see if we could get an evaluation by them to see whether or not they concur that um, their uh, curriculum would be effective and appropriate for him since we as a team have not come up with a solution that addresses those two issues that, that is evidence and research based. Because I keep hearing us mention the U Fly and the Star and the and the early reading skills builder and, and those types of programs, but we've already established that they are not designed for Gestalt learners uh, that have autism. So I'm not sure why we're going back to those and looking to um, explore those further when we've seen that not only those programs but all of the programs that we've used over the last four to five years have been grossly ineffective. However, there is a uh, program out there which is calculated to provide, um, would you know, meet the requirement for providing FAPE for this child by individualizing his education to meet his specific needs. So that's why, again, I request the evaluation by the experts in this field to be able to determine whether or not there is a solution that they 
have already that's already known of that is already evidence and research base that would be appropriate for this child. I'm going to have to go back to the team on the conversation we just had about reading interventions and what we were going to try that it was um, based on a previous recommendation from the family that they use one particular curriculum um, and not what was originally proposed that is a multimodal approach to reading. Mm -hmm. Is that what you just decided you were going to do? Did I miss something? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But not a particular programs such as Linda Mood Bell, Visualizing and Verbalizing. So um, anybody see a need to have a, an evaluation by Linda Mood Bell staff on their program? No, I mean. <laughs> okay, all right. Did you hear that, Mr. Um, um, that I, I, I still, yeah, I, I, heard, I heard something about, um, uh, doing some kind of approach that's multimodal or something of that nature. Um, I still haven't heard anything about uh, the school um, or the district having a research or evidence based program or curriculum or solution that's uh, geared towards uh, children who are Gestalt learners who have autism. Can can you please repeat the and tell me which one of the programs that you had mentioned are evidence and research based with geared towards children who are Gestalt learners? The youth like the youth like that curriculum. part. So this, it's already established that the youth like curriculum is has has not um does not is not evidence based for children with autism. So can we please stop talking about it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 Mr. Baptiste. So I'm I'm very confused because I thought we just spent the past 45 minutes talking about that and then just just now discussing that it was we were going to change over to that using that intervention. That's what you discussed. What I'm telling you is that uh -huh. Ms. Martin already told us that she spoke to the people at um, the University of Florida. And they told her that they do not have any evidence or research to show that the UFLOT program is um, applicable for children with autism. Uh, and in addition to needing a program that's applicable for children with autism, we need a program that is applicable for Gestalt learners. If you know of a program that meets those two criteria and have the care and, and is able to um, help children with those characteristics, then we'd be opening to listen to it. But if you do not have an evidence-based, a research-based program that is designed to meet the needs of children with those characteristics, then I again would humbly request that we have an evaluation by Linda Moo Bell, who are the experts in this area, to see whether or not they believe that their curriculum and their program would be appropriate for this child. And if the school has any reason why we shouldn't do that, then you can give us a prior written notice. If the team can come up with that reason today. Right. It's just a program, use of a program. So um, I'm the correct. I am not the curriculum leader of the school. So I what I heard was there's no specific research specific to students with autism. Students with autism were part of the research group when it was determined that was research-based intervention. I'm hearing from Ms. Martin that she says they have had success with some of their student or some of their, some of their student population who has autism um, in this. That's where I thought we were on this. And, and that's because That's why we asked for the performance data to see whether or not right. Ms. is one thing for Ms. Martin to say that it's another thing for us to see data that shows that you have sure. been successful with children with autism. And again, um, specifically children presenting with the Gestalt characteristic that Michael presents with. Correct. And I think we can all agree that we're talking about Michael's individual needs as one student on the spectrum. And um, if Dean had just talked about trying this other intervention to see if they get more rapid increases in 
his progress, then that's that's where they were. Yeah, that's but, where they are, but that's not okay. where the parents that's are because are. this is yeah. this is where the school has been for the last five years. And I mean, come on. Okay. I, I don't know what else okay. because it, it seems like this team had proposed a, a a reading program that was multifaceted, that multisensory to address Michael's individual needs in reading and comprehension. The team has the and team then has, you proposing the team has once again, and now you're proposing a dish and another new program. And I get it. We need if things are not working, we need to look at doing something else. I hear everybody saying yes. We want to try something else. Yes, and so the team has once again, the team has once again proposed a solution that is not evidence or research based. It, well, it is for teaching students reading. It is. So I don't know what else. Okay. Know what else uh, if, if you believe it is, then you could write as a prior written notice and then okay. we can go to due process and see if we can get a, uh, something that's um, designed. Okay, I got you. I, I can Michael's you know that individual needs. Okay, I don't have to buy the point for the next four hours. Okay, pardon? I don't have to buy the point for the next four hours. Mr. Uh, Baptiste, we lost you again. No, I, I was saying if, if you have a um, program that meets those two uh, criteria, then we're open to moving forward. If not, then you can write a prior written notice for I, us I and then we could then take this uh, to see what, what can be done about that since the parents do not agree with um moving forward with a solution that is not evidence of research based evidence of research based specifically for students with autism i hear you okay I students with autism presenting with gestalt characteristics okay all right prior written notice two yes why Um, I also had my hand raised. I'm not I have to. Oh, that's right. My you were gonna call her. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Ms. Baptiste. <laughs> um, I also had a recommendation um, for the team also, but I want to make a couple of comments. Um, so, you know, I do agree what my husband was saying is that you're basically going backwards. And so basically the team proposed for us to use something that the data already shows does not work <clears> and that is part of the reason why not only Michael, but the majority of students that come through these programs are failing. It can't even pass a third grade assessment. Um, the UFLY program, you know, it's an experiment. So basically, in the, the whole United States of America, a parent has a right to decide if they want their child to be experimented on or not. And so what the team just proposed was, hey, let's use this experimental program at UFLY when we have programs that are actually research and evidence based. And so the parents have a right to say, I don't want my child experiment on because we don't know the negative or positive outcomes of UFLA. They're, they're, they're learning now based on these children. And on their own website, they're saying they're making an ongoing effort. So that's part of, that's part of doing a study that you're trying to figure stuff out. And we don't, we don't have time to try to figure stuff out anymore. We have two programs, not only Linda Moo Bell, and I think, you know, when, when my husband said the evaluation, mm -hmm. what he's referring to is kind of like, say if you went to the Sylvan Learning Center, they do like a pre and post assessment. So normally they sometimes want to do their own assessment so they kind of see how we're going to navigate this child through this program. But even, even if you don't do the assessment, you still can use a Linda Moo Bell tutor. But my recommendation is for, you know, the Orton Gillingham program or the Linda Mubell and just moving forward with the tutor after school or in school, because Ms. Desmaradis, the way they do it in Georgia is those students who are in our autism contained classroom, they um, their reading is different from the other kids. So they would you I forgot which one she told me, whether it's Orton Gillingham or Linda Mubell, but they use that for reading and those students use a different curriculum 
because that helps them access the general curriculum for to, to help them meet the state standards. And so the same thing, but I'm asking for a little different, is that it resolved all the issues of ESY, everything. Um, the district received millions of dollars of funding for a before and after school tutoring. And so all the data that is in Michael's file, every piece of data, no matter which data you choose, supports the need for after after school tutoring. So that is another way you can do it. Or you can also bring in a uh, Orton Gillingham certified um, tutor or te they're usually teachers too, during that time to work with Michael too. So there's a lot of different options there, you know, that can be done because, you know, you probably gonna have to, it would take too long to try to get a teacher certified, but the easiest route is to have someone who's already certified and trained in that model to go ahead and immediately, because we've delayed so much. And, you know, it's all the evidence is already there. We have all the evidence. We've been making requests. There's no evaluation done. There's no prior written notice done. We don't get a response. So these requests that we're making has been going on for years. And then you you tell us, well, you just wait, wait some more. And all this time we've been waiting, Michael only has eight more years until he's 18. And he's going to be an adult. And I understand he can go to school longer than that. Uh, but that's a whole different conversation. But he only has eight more years to get it together. But you're asking us to continually wait, wait after waiting and having our rights violated for six years. So I don't understand why we're going backwards and not moving forward. And I would like an explanation based on data, not a person just saying no and yes. Like you have to present multiple forms of data and you have to present multiple ideas. But you can't come to the parent and say you have to use this experimental program. And that's what it sounds like you're trying to do by telling us we have to use UFLY. And UFLY is, is really for grades K through second. So that is their target range. So that program isn't really targeted for Michael's age. They're they're targeting K through second early intervention. And I did make the statement. I said I'm willing to use it as an extra on top of what we're asking for to help Michael catch up with you know what where he's at on grade level. But that will not be the main reading intervention tool that we use. That's an experiment. It's it's not an experiment, and even Linda Mood Bell or Orton Gillingham are continually getting data to use as research to show what how, how the effective. And can you speak? Um, you fly is very closely aligned um, and related to Orton Gillingham. Also, um, I know that I've. Um, when I the first time I looked at you fly, all I could see was Orton Gillingham at that point. So, and Orton Gillingham is also it's an approach. It's not a specific intervention. There are interventions that you, that are based in Orton Gillingham, but it is not a specific intervention. And both of those programs um, just it, they again they are skills based, so they're not. It's not a grade level. It's not level by grade. They're, it's all interventions, just based like on the need fly. of the student. Yeah, the individual need of the student. Ms. Trail has a question in the comment box. So, oh, Ms. Trail, I see your question. It says, "Is this program UFly being used for students with dyslexia in the school district?" I think it's being used, like you said, Ms. Martin. And please correct me if I'm getting this wrong. It's used. It, it's being used. Is it with all K two? We're using it with students? all K one and first students. Okay, all K one students, and then intervention for second, third, and we even have some fourth graders in the program. And yes, some of them we have some one student I know that has dyslexia listed on mm -hmm. the line. Well, and I think it's important to to capture that when we identify that there's a specific need in reading whether it comes because of a student's autism spectrum disorder or their language impairment or a specific learning disability, we still are able to use that as a support for them, correct? Okay. But you're using something that was not even tested on children with autism and they told you that themselves. Not specifically, no, they were part of the, the research group though, what they gathered data on on their outcomes. 
Yes. So, Michelle, do you know whether or not the children with autism that were part of that research group, whether they excelled or whether they regressed? Do you have that information? Because if you don't have that information, then you can't say whether or not the program is helpful or harmful for children with autism. That's the whole point of having evidence and research based Correct. tools. Correct. It's it's evidence based and research based on those types of interventions and the success they have with students with reading difficulties and challenges, as is any program. Um, any program we would use with Michael, we do need to see how he does with it because he is Michael. So it doesn't matter what program. What I'm hearing is you have tried some others. And so if it's not successful, we're here at the crossroads just before mm -hmm. this conversation of looking at doing something else to speed up his progress. Mm -hmm. So I have noted that you have requested Orton Gillingham tutor, Linda Moodbell tutor in school or after school. And school, as far as your interventions and the tools in your toolbox and looking at Gestalt needs and his language needs, are you proposing that he that you use the, that intervention at this point? Which one? <laughs> you, you fly. You fly. That's what you would decide. I think. I think it's. I mean. I think. I want to get the next early literacy, but I think, um, depending on what that's showing, I would be compared to the two programs. It's a little more comprehensive. Yeah. For all of the different parts. It's like can you talk they about. Probably can. Right. Oh, I think you fly would be better to go ahead and use since it does cover more of the different parts of. Teaching, reading, mm -hmm. phonological awareness, phonics, encoding, decoding, that such. So that would be more beneficial. Okay, uh, so the team has considered their proposal of Orton Gillingham tutor, Linda Mood Bell tutor in school or after school, and is recommending you fly at this time. So I will. Right, a PWN for that. All right, I have pulled up on the screen um, the second page of the prior written notice. Um, so under the section that says the action that school district or agency proposes or refuses to take, the parent request for compensatory education is the school should make up for errors made in an effort to get Michael up to grade level um, and use the extenuating circumstance as qualifier for ESY because parents take him to therapy services at least one day a week. Um, why the school district or agency proposes or refuses to take action. The purpose of ESY is to allow student to continue to make progress towards special education goals. Procedures, assessments, records, or reports used as basis for the action, progress monitoring, Lexia data, STAR data. All right, I saw Mr. Baptiste, so I... Let you back in. So, um, other options considered and the reasons why they were rejected uh, provide individualized instruction by LCS ESE teacher during the long summer break due to regression recoupment, crucial stage of development in reading and math, and nature and severity of disability. Other factors relevant to the proposal or refusal include Michael's making progress toward IEP goals when in attendance and instructed by an LCS ESE teacher. So that's what was included in the second page of the prior written notice.
Ms. Baptiste, I see your hand up. Oh, I was trying to read it up because you didn't put it up on the screen. So I was trying to pull it up myself to look at it. Um, okay, let me pull it up again. Um, I apologize. It was up, but I must have taken it down. Let me know if you're able to see that, Ms. Batiste. Are you able to see that? Um, I, I found it myself, so I was looking through it. But did they address also, um, because after we started filing state complaints over ESY, Michael was receiving ESY year round. And then after the state complaints, um, he stopped receiving ESY. And so now we, when you say you're starting ESY, ESY back, you're saying it's only for the summer months and not continuous year round like it's supposed to be. Um, I was a little confused on that. Can you can you speak to that? I'm trying Ms. to remember. We were saying you discussed that last yeah. week. Part of what we did. Part of what we did last week was we developed a plan based on Michael's needs, his individual needs for support for him over um, the summer break um, and reflected that on the schedule of services in the draft IEP because we agreed that there is a need for him to receive that support over the summer break. We then had a discussion about um, some of the shorter breaks of the school year and uh, we're referring back to what previous ESY support was for Michael in some of the shorter breaks where we reviewed and said that it was a uh, in the form of um, a work packet that was sent home for him. He wasn't coming to school for direct instruction over their shorter breaks. Um, at that point in time, if memory serves and team, correct me if I'm wrong, um, that's when discussion um, started about um, ESY in the form of additional tutoring um, in the evenings. And um, so our discussion about um, ESY over the shorter breaks um, kind of got caught up in that discussion that led to an impasse um, in the last meeting. So I hope that I'm covering what was discussed. So uh, I think the team is happy to discuss. Um, what ESY support could look like for Michael over some of those shorter breaks as well. Um, um, you know, in the, pardon me, in the past, um, he did receive ESY support over some of those shorter breaks through the form of some work packets to continue working on some of the target skills. Um, and, um, so I don't know if that's something the team feels is is worth replicating for for Michael over the shorter breaks. Um, and because I basically was asking, what data do you have to support moving it from year round to just the summer? Um, because it was some data Ms. Borges read that said something about Michael took a test. And she said, oh, he scored only like, I forgot what the score was, but it was like 40, 40% 40 because he had missed, he had six days absence. So she didn't say that was straight in the row or not. But uh, that's a short break. So well, that, and, it's kind of like you have data that's. To, if I can speak to that, if I recall this, Ms. Brewer, correct me again if I'm capturing it incorrectly. I do recall you saying that he had a lower score on one of the skills that you were working on in mm -hmm. that intervention because he had missed some school. Mm -hmm. But then the next time you assessed it, he was able to score where he had been previously. Correct. Okay. What about over the winter break? I, I have a question. Yes. Okay. I'm um, talking to you guys from my phone because I was having so much problems with the uh, connections. No worries. Um, so 
is, is regression and recruitment the only uh, criteria that we base the denial of ESY for the short period and for also for the after school tutoring? Is, is uh, regression and recruitment the only criteria that was used um, for that? No, I think our team's recommendation is that he qualifies in a number of areas for ESY. Um, like I said, in our conversation at the last meeting, we talked in, kind of in depth about what our proposed services for ESY across that summer break could be. Um, we didn't really have a chance to talk about what it could look like over those shorter breaks um, before we kind of reached part in our conversation where um, um, constructive conversation kind of came to an end. So. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about the shorter breaks now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Intervention. So, Ms. Boer is, is taking a look at his intervention data ahead and after winter break. Is that correct? That's what you're looking for, Ms. Boer? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so, he was on so the intervention right before the break, um, he didn't score high enough um, to go to the next one. So he didn't hit the 80%. So we did the same exact intervention lesson that next day he was back. Um, and he performed almost exactly the same on that um, across the different areas. Um, let's see for some of his other data besides intervention data. Let me get that pulled up again. So his Oral reading fluency decreased um, from across the winter break in it from 27 words correct per minute to 19 words correct per minute. This is on a third grade level passage because okay. um, that's what the stars mm -hmm. assess, um, CBM is assessing. The one that we did today was also still lower than the one before okay. uh, winter break. So that fluency might be an area fluency, to target with some of yes. those supports over a shorter break. Yeah. Um, so that's so. a two week break. So right now we have a spring break coming up. Mm -hmm. What would we, what, so fluency is, is an issue. It sounds like what would you propose for looking at for the spring break? I would suggest like pretty much not necessarily exclusively fluency targeted stuff because I think he could benefit from comprehension type stuff too. But sure. I think fluency is where I'm seeing the most drastic dip from this data. Um, so. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Because I know we've talked at length about the difference between grade level um, mm -hmm. um reading expectations yes. and where he's performing currently are there supports i'm kind of thinking like lexia skill builders mm -hmm. or things like that that might be really targeted on the skills he's working on building and maintaining mm -hmm. um, which if we want him to be able to continue to make progress toward iep goals it makes sense that those supports align with those skills on the iep goals if we are wanting to support so i'm wondering if that would be a meaningful way to support yes over the break to yes. give some things that come straight out of Lexia skill builders. Yes. So I don't like the way the skill builders are for fluency. Okay. I don't think they're very uh, friendly, um, but for those other skills, like okay. the CBC words and some of those other things that we're wanting to target with these IMP goals and some of the comprehension, I think that's absolutely appropriate. I would want to pull um, think some better like reading fluency decodable type. Sure. Um, work from a different source potentially because I do not like the way that it is set up for just a novel person to sit down and look at and know what to do. Sure. Well, and 
that's if we're talking about developing a packet, that's another thing to consider. We want it to be meaningful. We want it to be as effective as it can be. And so, you know, we trust your judgment as his teacher of knowing what's going to potentially make that, that best connection um, in addressing some of those skills. So not direct instruction. We're talking about materials. Materials. Yeah. Has he been successful with that in the past? Because I think you referred to Mr. Bannock had done that in the past. With Lexia Skill Builders? Well, no, oh, she's not sending packets. Oh, we're sending packets. Oh, yeah, I see what you're asking. I see what you're asking. For, for that would be the question. Right. What's his data from across grades from last year? Um, his oral reading fluency went up. After the break. After the break. So that was different than what happened this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What grade level was that last year? Second. Mm -hmm. Second grade passage. Um, but still, like you say, it went up from where it, it had been up, so. before the break. Yeah. So if that's when there was that. support there through a, mm -hmm. a packet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Matt, Mr. and Mrs. Baptiste may know since it went home. Did you hear that question? We're just, I'm, I'm asking, like, was that successful? The data looks different last year over the winter break than it did this year, where Ms. Gore saw that he stayed. No. His, his fluency, fluency dropped, dropped, dropped and still is lower than. It was previous to the yes. break. And so, and so what I guess Mr. Bannock had done in the past was send packets home. But my question is, was that successful? Now it looks like when he gained skills last year, but this year not so much. So is that to say then the packets were successful? And Ms. Brockett brought up a point of well, what did those packets look like? And since Mr. Bannock is not here, I was just wondering if, if since they went home, Mr. and Mrs. Baptiste, if you were aware of what that entailed. It will have to depend upon the data that the school has for that, because um, we're confused also on what you all are doing, but we're just throwing what? a loop. Um, so. What we're doing is you asked us to consider looking at other parts of the school year with, and look at the data to see before a break and after a break um, how he did. Miss um, Boer was seeing that he had some challenges. Challenge, he dropped a little bit after this winter break um, in reading fluency. We were talking about that would be a, an area then to target. Um, and we talked about spring break was coming up to, to make sure then if that's something we wanted to target, what would that look like? It was discussed that in the past, Mr. Bannock sent a packet home. Um, and that's what our ask was, what that looked like. What sorts of activities that It was, he yeah, said. So pull that from the data that um, you all have for making this decision. Um, so I, I have a totally di different recommendation. Even though I know packets can be used, I don't think packets mm -hmm. are adequate enough considering the um, regression that we're seeing in Michael. Right, uh, that's, well, that's why I wanted us to look at that. You I'm just looking at through. last yeah. year when he had a packet, it looked like he, he came back and his skills were higher than when he was assessed prior to the break. Um, this year didn't have a packet, so, and his reading fluency seemed to have dropped a bit. So that's that's the discussion right now. You said you had a recommendation? Mm 
Here's your muted, Miss Betsy's. Yes. Um, I would recommend because to help him not only just with his um, reading and math, but his social skills, his communication skills, um, due to him having to receive autism related therapies and due to the data that's showing he's regressing and he is um, not making adequate process, progress, um, for him to do a program like at like was it, Progressive Pe Pediatric Impact Tallahassee have programs doing those gaps where they offer a combination of all of those services together to those children. Well, that's always a consideration. Do they have data to show that that programs and they're using research-based materials and, and interventions and have data to show that, that the students there make progress? Yes, since they're a private institution, they don't have to keep up with the guidelines of the data that you all have to report to DOE. So uh, private well, institutions are quite different where they don't have to <laughs> follow those same guidelines. Okay, so, all right, well, I guess my seat on the bus is that if we were to entertain using public funds to pay for this service, then we would we would want to know if they have success and what actual interventions they're using. That was my ask. And can we get a copy of that same data um, that you said you're asking for for UFLY? More specifically, I think we're a little confused about what you're asking. Yeah, but I just want to make sure I got the data. So the same data that you're saying you're trying to figure out, I was still confused on UFLY. So can we actually get that data? Because I would assume if you consider it that you have that same data to show that program is making progress. So okay. can we have that um, sent home, please? Oh, we've got plenty of data yeah. making progress. That's all yeah. she needs is it making progress here at our school. Is that what you're asking, Ms. Baptiste? Well, it's usually within the actual program itself because, mm -hmm. you know, the school isn't a, um, I can't think of the word for it, but it's a certain type of criteria you have to have to make sure the research isn't faulty. Um, and so normally they would do that in their mm -hmm. own studies. So normally you would get that from UFLY themselves. So you can get, um, because, you know, they told you all, and they told us they have, that they never tested any kids with autism. So we would actually like to see that data too. Because it's it's weird how you're saying you need that for the ESY, but you didn't do that for the um, UFLAP program. So I'm a little confused on that. Well, um, I don't think anybody said they didn't have, they couldn't get that information for you. I think Ms. Martin no, said um, that. No, we can find, I, I'm, I'm emailing our district representative who did all the research to, to be able to bring it into all of Leon County schools. We're not able to do that without the research from the company. So I'm sure she had, or from the university, I'm sorry. I'm sure she has it somewhere, but I, you know, she looked into this before she brought it to our whole district. So it's not just our school using it, it's the, the district is using it. Is Ms. Trail the tutor? Ms. Trail the tutor? Ms. Desmaradas, what, what program are you using? She has not we haven't about. begun tutoring with Ms. Desmaradis as yet. We we were getting tutoring through um, Tally for Tutors uh, last semester. Ms. Desmaradis, we're going to be starting uh, this semester. However, Michael was sick in January, and I've been dealing with some health issues myself, so we haven't been able to get our schedule together to get uh, started with Ms. Desmaradis. Um, were you going to was the, was the team going to discuss the alternatives for uh for our request for the Linda Mood Bell? Did did we discuss that already? Mm -hmm. Yes. And 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 we discussed uh which which evidence based uh alternative did we come up with as a team? You fly. So I, I, okay, so I thought we already established um that Ms. Martin has asked the researchers at UFLY and they told her that uh, UFLY has not, does not have evidence of research uh, based data for children with autism. Why are we keep going in circles on that? I don't know because I think we, we already agreed we disagree and I'm, I'm going to write a prior notice on that. 
In the meantime, Ms. Gordon so is going to get the data that is um, that is available on you that our district used to make the decision to use the UFLY program. And and there is district right, right now on the progress. Yes. Yes. But yeah. Ms. Shields, you're not allowed to go back to the office and make that right of prior written notice by yourself. The team has to come up with alternatives. So as a team, we would like to hear the alternatives to, to our um, request of having a gestalt and autism uh, uh, calculated program for Michael and having an evaluation. So what was the alternative to having him evaluated for a program that's uh, designed to meet his individual needs? What was the alternative for that? Could the team please discuss? I didn't hear that discussion. All I heard was you offering another program that is not research or evidence based for children with uh, autism presenting with Gestalt characteristics. Is that is that the I mean, if that's the response of the team, then that's fine. I'll accept that as a response and you can put that on a prior written notice for me. So is the response of the team that you are not going so the response of the team is that you are not going to um, move forward with a program that is evidence and research based for children with autism who have Gestalt characteristics. Please state this for the um, camera for us. The team is the team yeah. has decided that we feel that youth fly would fit into this um, category for Michael. So no, we do not. We're not going to look at at your program or your company that you would like us to take it to. So the team has decided that we are not going to move forward with the evidence of research based program, correct? That we are no, moving forward with not, an evidence based research yeah. based program. Yes, for, we are, for, yeah. the, for, for the general for the general set of students in Leon County School, but not in that that's not calculated to provide faith for a child with autism with Gestalt uh, characteristics. Am I correct? For this for students who have reading deficiencies due to language or a language expression and language comprehension and reading deficiencies. It's a research so, so we do, evidence based program that, that so we do as, students as, with as, as, a, as a team we do understand that children with autism learn differently than children uh, than the than their parents who are yes. uh, neurotypical, correct? Yes. And, and so we're still going to use a uh, a program. The, the team is still recommending a program that's designed for neurotypical children. I I don't know that we have any information, Mr. Baptiste. I don't know that we have any information that the sample group that was used in the research base <laughs> for UFLY was exclusionary of students who were neurodivergent or on the autism spectrum disorder. Yeah, so, so it may not so have been. It, it, hold on. So, can, so I, can I finish my thought, please? Can I finish my thought, please? Sure, please? So I feel like we spent a lot of time in this discussion, and we are all wanting to support Michael. We are all wanting to provide interventions to help him make the most progress that he's able to make. The team here has spent a long time identifying the Gestalt learner characteristics that you brought and provided input on and identify that he is a student who needs support with reading that ha uses some of those approaches in doing that. We've also considered continuing with the early reading uh, skills, skills builder. We've also, I think, um, none of us really want to give this much entertainment, but I think we have to say that we've considered stopping interventions for reading and no one wants to do that. So it may not have been said out loud because we all see that he needs interventions. So I think what the team is wanting to do is to use this evidence-based research fact program that to our knowledge, one, to the point you bring up, was not specifically designed for students with autism, with Gestalt learning characteristics, but two, was not exclusionary of those students in their research and in their findings, to the best of our knowledge at this point in time. So 
We and, want and to so put that in place and and progress monitor and gather data to see if that's an effective intervention for my call. Okay, so I just want to make sure that that we're on the same page. Here. Come, I, all I'm doing is restating what the team is stating, right? I'm not, I'm not make, I'm not adding anything to it. I'm not taking anything away. I just want to be clear on what the team is doing. So again, the team is after, um, uh, you know, we're eight months into the school year, right? We have data on the uh, early reading, early skills early reading skills builder, whatever, whatever the case may be, um, the team is deciding that they are going to move forward with something that is not evidence of research based for children with autism. And they're also going to move forward with uh, programs that do not have any evidence of research based data to show that they're effective for children with Gestalt characteristics. That that's that is correct, right? That is not if correct. I, if I'm saying if I'm mis, if I'm misstating what's happening, please let me know. Because again, I think we've said it uh, several Mr. times now. Mr. Reese, Mr. Reese just said that you know we don't know if it's exclusionary of these children. We don't know if it includes these children. I mean, we don't we don't have the data for that. So we're moving forward with something that we do not know whether or not it's effective for children with autism or children who are presenting with assault characteristics. Am I am I making things up? They did not research on a subgroup related to students with autism. They have research to show that it works Typical with students children. with gestalt needs that need a multifaceted, multi-sensory approach to teaching reading and comprehension. So now you're saying they did do research on children with gestalt needs? No, sir, I'm not. I'm not. Nobody said okay. that. They well, said then, that, that I, those I thought, students are inclusive in the group. Those students are inclusive in the group that they researched. They did not pull so you, out so, a subgroup. So you, so you know that there were children with gestalt needs in the research group that was included, and do you know yes, whether or not the, the gestalt needs have to do with oral language needs and comprehension language needs? Yes. And you're and you're saying that you know that the data show that those children were um, impacted by this. We are getting uh, the data for you. We are getting the data. Okay, for so you. are you getting the data for me, or is this something that we know? Because it's either one or the other. You're getting the data for me, and we're going to have this data at some point in the future. I'm, or is this something that I we know today? I am referring to our our curriculum leaders at this school who sit in curriculum meetings with our district-based folks that are reporting the data and reporting the successes and the monitoring and the progress of students who are using UFLY who have these language comprehension and reading challenges. Yes, we were told that they did the research on all of the students in the air, in their the school district where they I guess it was Gainesville where they came up where they came up with this program based on all of the research. So all the students there, like you know, ESE students and non-ESE students. Okay, so uh, so let me make this clear. So take for instance Hawk Rise Elementary School, which is an excellent school, right? Hawk Rise Elementary School, let's say you get a grade of an A, right, for um, from DOE or whoever gives out school grades, right? That means that, you know, in totality, Hawk Rise Elementary School is doing great. However, if you break it down, you might see that, oh, there's going to be some kids in here that are failing. I mean, any school is going to have kids that are failing. How do we know whether or not the kids who are not who did not do well on UFLY? Because we can't. It's obviously not you know, like they didn't implement UFLY and everybody just all of a sudden you know was able to read at a college level, right? Because we know that that's just not reality. That's not how research works. That's not how data works. It's just not how anything works, right? So we don't know if this again. We don't know if this is evidence based to meet the needs of the individual needs of this child and yet we are forward with it. Am I correct or am I making things up? Mr. Baptiste, we don't know if, if this team were to propose Orton Gillingham or vi visualizing and verbalizing or seeing stars, they don't know that that would meet the individual needs of Michael either. 
until they try it. So that's why you're doing evaluation, which is what I requested. So again, Lyndon Rube Bell is the expert in providing educational resources and educational curriculum for children who have autism with presenting with gestalt uh, characteristics. This is why I requested an evaluation. This team has not presented anything that is evidence-based or research-based as an alternative. All I'm asking for is an evaluation. He may go to the evaluation and they say, oh, no, you know what? There's nothing we can do for this child because he doesn't, the characteristic that he's displaying with, we don't have any research or any evidence to show that we can be effective with this child. Therefore, I would come back to the IP meeting and we would proceed with you fly or we would proceed with whatever the next best alternative is. But right now, you don't have anything. Okay. The team has made a proposal. I have your. I have your disagreement noted. I have what else was considered for prior written notice. Okay. I'm very and, concerned and, and that parents, we are still at this and the parents, and the, pa the parents need to make sure that we understand what is happening with and what you're moving forward with. And again, nobody in this room has said that this is a research or evidence-based program for children with autism presenting with gestalt characteristics, yet the team is deciding to move forward with it. Am I correct or am I incorrect? You're incorrect. Again, okay, the team please, is moving forward tell, with a research evidence-based program that works with students who have oral language and receptive language reading deficiencies. It is not specific is this individualized to students. For Michael? It will be individualized with his teacher who understands the strategies of teaching students on the spectrum and works with him one on one to ensure he receives instruction based on and his we have, individual and we have, needs. And we have no, we have, I mean, to be quite frank, we have no data to show she's ever been successful at that, do we? Okay, I, you know what? I, I, I think we're going to so, have to stop so, here because, I mean, oh, no, really, because I'm sorry, I have to speak to this team and this teacher. And what you just did was a huge mm -hmm. slap in her face. Mm -hmm. And I am sorry. We are respectful to you and we will try to work through all of this. Your son, we well, are responsible. I'm speaking. The data I am and speaking. Not giving it to us. I'm speaking. I am speaking. We have a responsibility to make sure your son has an active IEP. This has gone on since May. This team has been trying to meet with you to finalize a plan. So your child has a finalized plan. We come back to the table, you add more things. I understand that things change. We can meet again, but you are consistently keep this team hijacked from getting this plan in place for your son. You're attacking a teacher and putting her, oh, no, 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 and saying derogatory things against her teaching skills when she gets up every morning and comes to this school to teach your child. I won't, we're stopping now. We're going to have to reconvene. Let's do it again. We are still not here. Oh, no, no, no. So, we are still not here where we have an so number active one, IEP for so your number, son. So number we one, are trying to just number discuss one, what he needs on num the bus. Number we one, are not there. To, to, to start with, Ms. Booher, I apologize. That was out of order and it was out of place. And I sincerely apologize. I know you do your best working with Michael. It's just that I don't believe that you have the tools that you haven't been given the tools and the um, programs that are going to be uh, tailored in order to help Michael succeed. So that's what that's what I meant. I did not. I, I was. I did. I'm sorry if that came out like that. That was my fault. But second of all, the second thing we need to address is you have no ability to close this IP meeting. You're correct you don't have the because right you to do keep that, you Hill. keep bringing back things from two and three years ago. You are correct. We okay. do need to do we're, it. We're talking we can about go right on without now. you. Would you so, like us to, again, to do this? You you, you shut it down like last time. I, I would I would like you to try it again. So Let's if you want it. to go ahead and try it, go ahead and try yeah. it. No, no, I have, I actually have some input to add to because you know Where's, my perspective was that you was not rude to the teacher. So from my perspective is kind of like you took his words and twisted it. So what he was saying is what we've always been saying with this district and this district is aware of this. And so what you do is twist our words and try to make it like we're attacking the teacher or the staff. And we have consistently said that the district does not fund or provide these teachers and the staff with the tools they need to teach children with autism 
in this classroom. And the evidence and data is there to show that. We have a right to ask you. What we were asking you was, show us the data that has made you make the decision to use Ufly. And you tell us you, you're you just making up stuff. And Ms. Martin clearly said that she specifically asked them, does this work for children with autism? Or had they had um done the study with children with autism? They said, no, we also called and researched ourselves. So we already know the answer. So okay. you can beat I'm around the bush, you but there's no research she used you earlier. Now you're saying this work either. I, so I, I apologize. That can I, I, please I have lost my patience. I have lost yes, my I did not patience. Cut you I off. take can it I personally when a teacher is treated that way. And and she and so we'll have to read You made that up. You made that up. Nobody no. is because making it up. We are asking there's for no more, data. Yes, there's no more accusations. No, mm -mm. we asked for data and then you made it until we're yes. doing this and that. That was all made up. He has a right to ask you for data. That is not an attack on the teacher. It is really an attack on the teacher. Ask for data. We are we have provided data. They have provided data before, and you've asked for additional data that the principal is getting for you. They have never you do have a that right. we have sat here for days and listened to your input, and considered your input. And we are trying to move forward in having an IP for Michael. And and Ms. Shields, you, you don't even, I'm not even sure if you're familiar with the history of this uh, current uh, round of IP meetings, but the reason that we're in February of 2024 and we're now trying to get this IP meeting finished is because Mr. Reese refused to call the meeting over the summer and he refused to call the meeting in the fall. So okay, we're done. We're, okay, Steve, this us, is us, time us out. being uh -huh. at this point is got There's nothing accusations. to do with the parents. These are unfounded it's and not an accusation. It's all on video. Okay. It's not yes. accusation. It's all on video. Do you want me to yes. post the videos so we can show Mr. Reese was supposed to um, set a meeting and then pull up my email to show no emails from Mr. Reese? in the summer and no emails from Mr. Reese in the fall. Okay, Mr. Baptiste, we're, we're, we're finished. So we're finished. When no, can we meet again? Finished. I'm no, not, we're not finished. No, we are not. Okay, we cannot sit here and have you accuse well, people you know what, you know of, what, Ms. Shields, of you're lying accused. and, and you're mysteries. Accused. Mysteries. If, you're if accused. you want to leave the meeting, you're free to You're free to go because you haven't contributed yeah. anything to the meeting except telling me that no, what we, I'm saying is incorrect done. when we're all I'm doing is explaining what's happening. No, what time? We are done with this meeting today. We need to reconvene so we can finish this IEP for Michael. Um, can y'all actually provide have, us with the prior have the written alternative. notice yeah. and the data? Can you provide us And we need to discuss the alternatives as a team. Yes, I've got that list added That's to the list of prior written notices. The team discusses when can we meet again? I, it's my understanding you can only meet on Fridays. Is it next Friday? No, so we, we complete this IEP. We have tried to ask for data. When we came to this meeting, we did not receive the data. And you sent the data to us in the meeting. So we need to get the data first so we can have time to review it. And we also need to have proper notice of who's going to be in this meeting because we we did not receive proper notice that you were going to be in this meeting and so you know you're violating our rights here and then you misinterpret our words and try to make it seem like we're saying something else so once we get the data we can reach back out and form a um, time after we've had time as parents with disabilities review all the data they've requested and we have not received we're not fully informed and we're still confused so we cannot move forward and i agree with that so can you please get us the data in our prior written notices and then we can schedule another date? Um, we're responsible for um, having an active IEP. And yes, you will get the prior yes, written notices. I know. So all the, the real yes. reason so, that you're so concerned now is the due process and the state complaints. No, no. So you know, that is what it's about. And it's not about Michael and that's a parent. That, ma'am, so, this team has been trying to meet with these. This is not, this is not productive in helping Michael. We have what it all doing right now by, by accusing us of things. It's not helpful. Okay, so you said you will, you will, we will be in touch when we get you the notices that you requested and the data. And all right. data. All right, I put the non-coercion statement in the chat. Um, it's our hope, as always, that we've not prohibited, uh, discouraged, or attempted to discourage you from inviting another adult of your choice to today's meeting. So I'm asking in the chat if you agree with that. You can either respond verbally or you can respond in the chat. Yes. Okay. 
All right, we will reach out with those notices and convene as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye. And so when and so when we do see the alternatives in the prior written notice, it'll be the alternatives that were discussed in this meeting, correct? Because there's supposed to be no discussion about any anything regarding Michael and his IP without the parents being present. Are we clear? Well, that's never been an issue. I don't understand why you're saying that. Well, I'm I'm just making sure that when when I get a prior written notice, it's going to have discussing this meeting in it. Correct. That's why we Correct. have meeting minutes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you.